This podcast was recorded on Gubby Gubby land and pays respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Welcome Sophia to the podcast. Hello, how are you? I am so good. I'm so excited to be here. I'm already like really excited for this conversation. So I'm like buzzing. (laughs) Yeah, literally me too. I'm like, what is going on? I'm just so excited to get into it. And like I just said, like, let's start recording before we just keep Mm -hmm. on talking because that was just exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Before we get into like who you are and just like dive into our like conversation that we're going to have, I would love for you to share what's your most embarrassing or like funny period story? Yeah, amazing. So, I mean, just to like humble myself, like I was saying to you before we started recording, I actually had, I feel like I had more pissing my pants stories than period stories. <laughs> I didn't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. I think that's a bad thing. <laughs> so I was like racking my brain for period stories. But um, I, the first thing that comes to mind for me is um, I used to be in the fitness industry and I was super, super into the gym when I was really young. And obviously when I was young, I wasn't old enough to drive yet. So I took the bus quite a lot. Now, This actually makes sense for what I teach today, but I was a very confident person in terms of wearing the crop top and the leggings and they would be bright matching colors like my rider wear sets, all of that. And I remember I had this like electric blue set and I, it was like pretty out there for the gym, but I didn't even cover myself up with a shirt. I just went onto the bus. I was strutting my stuff. I, like I always say nowadays, I was walking down the street, like I owned it. And then <laughs> when I was transferring from the bus to the train station, I was like, I really need to pee. Okay. I'm, I really need to pee. And then I went to like, I'm like strutting all the way down the train platform. Like this is a massive fucking platform. And I, as soon as I get to the bathroom, I look in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, there's a bug on my back. And no, 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 no. There was, I had just fully bled through my bright electric blue leggings and I was just fully strutting my stuff. I did not bring any cover up either. So I was just, (laughs) I was just absolutely like red and blue, massive, massive bleeding patch on on my ass. So that was kind of like, okay, well, I really appreciate how confident I was, but equally, I probably should have checked. I probably should have been a little bit more organized. So um, yeah. (laughs) That was like a true test for like, okay, but are we confident? Yeah, literally, literally. I was like, I'm confident-ish, but also I'm really uncomfortable right now, (laughs) which is fair enough. (laughs) How do I get out of this? Like, I literally can't. Like, those situations are the worst when you're like, go somewhere and you like, Mm -hmm. don't take your spare. And like, I feel like for me, whenever I've been in situations like that, where whether it's been like my period or like I've worn something white and like spilt something on myself, it's like my intuition's always like, just pack something spare. And then I'm like, Mm -hmm. right. And then I'm like, I fucking wish I listened to my past self and actually just pop something in my back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And every time I'm on my period, I always am in the mood to wear white pants, especially to dance and all of that. And I am just like, look, this just serves the outfit vibe. I understand the risk with it, but equally, like, I need to wear white right now. Like, it's just it's just what I want. It just happens for some yeah. reason. That is so funny. Um, Well, since you've kind of touched on a little bit there of just like the work that you do and just like around confidence, and obviously I'll probably name this episode something to do with confidence, but I would love for you to just like introduce yourself and like who you are and then we'll get into like, yeah, like sort of why you do this work with confidence because I just think it's so fucking cool. It's so different to just like the usual, like I was saying before, um, started recording it's not just the mm. make it, make it like you're actually just like pulling people into line which I think is so important and so cool Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, look, a big part of what I do is online. I teach women how to be confident. So more of like in the mindset and mentorship space. Um, and then also I do quite a few things on the, on the side of that as well. Like during my nine to five, you'll find me like working in a bridal boutique. So I am a bridal stylist there and I also um, in the social media lead. So also part of what I do is I also do help other businesses like capture 
content and capture their authentic power through content, right? Which also like the confidence part bleeds into as well, which is really cool. So you'll find me like, yes, speaking to confidence and mindset, but equally you'll, I'll also be drawing a lot of examples from what I find in the bridal industry, from what I find in social media and from fashion. Cause I've always been into that. Um, and then also, yeah, on the side I do, I try, I do, what's it called? Dance in heels. <laughs> yeah, I do heels dance, which I know um, you've done um, with Tay before as well, a mentor. And um, yeah, I also, like I said, in fitness industry background, so I'm training in the gym. Currently, I'm training for a half marathon. So a lot of these things, like I, I teach confidence, but equally, like, it's so cool to see, like, how that's impacted by everything else that I do. And then I study as well. So yeah, and I think, like, I can relate to you in the sense of, like, so much going on and a lot of people people like externally of that will think like, you know, it can project very easily. Like you mustn't have time to nourish yourself. You mustn't have time for your relationship, all of these Mm -hmm. things. But it's really interesting when you are just like in alignment and you're doing things that actually fill your cup every fucking day. It doesn't Mm -hmm. come from a place of like, I should be doing this. It's coming from a place of like, I actually get to do this. And Mm -hmm. I think that's like, it's like literally just fueling your evolution and like allowing you to like actually just continue to get more done fit more into your schedule without it actually feeling like a drag, which I think is just so cool. Um, What would you think, what would you say would have been like your turning point in like stepping into like embodied confidence? Like, did you, you know, start out really insecure? Were you modeled insecurities? Like how did that all like look for you? Yeah. So it's really interesting for me because I, and this is a big why part of why I'm so passionate about teaching like the not fake it till you, not the fake it till you make it approach is because I grew up in a sense of people always described me as someone that's very confident, someone that was very, very self-assured. And I grew up as a very much a high achiever, but equally as well on the social side, I actually had really bad social anxiety. I also had generalized anxiety disorders of both kinds. And then I had um, these other kind of mental health disorders. So it was just very, very much like a high functioning you know, person, but also on the inside, there was a lot of turbulence. On the inside, there was a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity. I didn't get social media until I was 16. And even then, like my partner and my friends had made it for me. Like I didn't actually want it, right? Um, So there were kind of like those two sides to the coin in that aspect where it was like, yeah, like I know how amazing I am. I know how smart I am. I know how, um, and I was still very, like I I was really good swimmer. I did myself in the arts. Like I was very trying to be an all-rounded and high achieving kind of student but equally like I hadn't actually built like proper confidence in myself so it was yeah it was a very interesting thing to grow up being called a confident person when you weren't actually one right um and then once I actually um reached this point it was yeah when I got I was 16 and my partner made my social media for me and I just didn't really feed into the idea of just like a personal account and posting. Like I did the thing for a few months of posting, you know, cute photos, like every couple of months you get hundreds of comments. And that was kind of like the, the thing, right? Like post a quick photo, not too often, but you know, once every couple of months and then get lots of comments. Like that was just the thing. And, um, I just didn't really feel fulfilled by it. Same way as, as I didn't feel fulfilled by an empty schedule, um, or like just doing nothing. And so I actually started to use that towards um, to share my fitness journey. And I think that that's where like I had started to really share not only my gym journey, but the mindset behind it. And at the time it was very random. It was more so about like, you know, consistency, discipline, motivation, all of that kind of stuff. Right. Um, But people really started to feed into that and they really started to be impacted by that. And so I actually decided to leave like this, the top um what's it called like yeah I decided to leave Queensland Academy which was the top school in Queensland and that was something I'd been working towards for my whole life like since I was around eight years old and I decided to pursue my career as a personal trainer so this is when I'm like still doing high school but wanted to do my qualification and basically as I just progressed through the fitness industry over those next couple of years people were being impacted by what I had to say and people were joining the gym like I there was someone that came up this guy that came up to me on the train and said I know you, I joined the gym because of you. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is really, really cool. Um, And as I started actually eventually got my personal training business and had some clients, like I could see that I was not, they were not coming to me to learn how to squat. Yes, I taught them how to squat, but I, all of our chats were about the relationship with themselves. 
right? Mm -hmm. It all came down to the mindset. That was my point of difference is it was the mindset. It wasn't necessarily like the fat loss results, which you may have seen, but equally it was actually about the lifestyle and the mindset. And as I, you know, pivoted throughout, you know, due to being in an unstable home, I had to leave home, move across the state when I was 17 and during the pandemic and all of that, I had to move across from one side of Australia to the other on my own. And I, yes, naturally my career had pivoted, but as I got through, okay, from fitness through to sales, through to um, fashion business, through to luxury jewelry, through to now bridal, it's like the consistent theme in terms of why I was excelling in my job was because of the confidence work, was because of being able to see through people, was because of the mindset aspect of it. It was like really, really interesting to see how that just like was the common theme. And I was like, okay, something is up here. Yeah. And I think a lot of people miss that. And a lot of people sometimes think they're doing like the things from a place of Mm. like, no, this is like, what's true for me. This is what feels really good for me. But then like their mindset just wobbles, like as soon as something gets thrown at them, where I think it's really cool that like in your journey, it's been like pivot after pivot after pivot. And you've like had to fucking move across the whole country. And yet you've taken that as something to an opportunity rather than like something that's actually going to deter you from your path. And I think that in itself is just so cool because a lot of people would just stop there. Like yeah. they would just be like, I'm in an unstable home for me. Okay, cool. I'm just yeah. going to stay working a job I hate, whatever. Whereas you've taken it all as an opportunity. And I think that in itself is like so much wisdom because a lot of people actually like refuse to see opportunities in like the tougher situations. Um, And I kind of guess that even like does like lean into like the confidence thing, right? Like a lot of people choose to refuse that they, wait, choose to refuse. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) It's a choice. It's a choice to refuse. So I agree. (laughs) But like, you know, they are actually deeply insecure inside, but they get that external validation from, yeah, the hundreds of comments on Instagram or, you know, their, their friends, like, validating them that they look good because they've got like a face full of makeup on. And like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Like I love makeup myself, but I think there's that incongruency in like how you're feeling on the inside versus how you're showing up on the outside. And like something Tay always says is like, just because someone's like the loudest in the room doesn't actually mean that they're like the most confident. And Mm -hmm. since she said that, like it probably was around a year ago where she first said it, I, I I've now like been able to see that in situations. And it's like, that's so fucking true. Like the loudest in the room is usually the most insecure. Yeah, yeah. Um, How do you, like, how would you define, I guess you kind of already have, but like just defining like the difference in like actually embodied confidence. Okay. Let me reword that. When you're like, say someone's coming to you and they're like, I'm a confident person. How can you like instantly say like whether it's embodied or whether it's like not embodied or like, how do you kind of define that? Yeah, you can Mm. tell it from a mile away before they even open their mouth. And it takes, you know, knowing confidence to know that. But also it takes one to know one, which is something like um, a mentor that Tay and I had in common. Like she always says, like, it takes one to know one when it comes to takes um, a liar to know a liar. Like it takes, you know, um, an imposter to know an imposter, that kind of thing. And because I had but it's not coming from a pedestal. It's like because I had faked confidence before, I know what it looks like when you do try and overexpress and when you do try and make other people perceive you as someone that's confident, right? And the first thing sometimes is someone that says, I'm, oh, I'm really confident. You know, sometimes you can say, see it in the way that they say it, that they're actually just saying it to, to try and say it versus someone who's actually confident in, in, in their abilities and in their personality and has no issue with other people seeing them as a confident person. Does that make sense? So like, it's a bit like roundabouts, but the way that someone says it, you know, when someone will say something and you're like, okay, <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? And it's yeah, like, yeah. why do you, I never ask, like, why would you say that? Whereas like, if someone describes like, it's like, oh, how would you describe yourself? And they say, yeah, I'm a pretty, like my personality, I'm really confident. I'm really bubbly. I'm really outgoing. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where, you know, okay. Like that, that's just part of their personality and they just know who they are. So an embodied, like confident person, you couldn't see it in the way they walk down the street right? You can see, like, I always say, walk down the street like you own it. Because I do. And like, um, it's so funny, because if you've ever been to a dance class, like a heels dance class, specifically, you do a lot of walks, potentially in the warm up. Um, And then my heels teacher always makes a joke about how like, obviously, you wouldn't walk like this in your normal day. But I'm like, you know what, sometimes I do, right? Sometimes I do. (laughs) Sometimes I walk down the grocery aisle, like I'm doing, you know, like I'm strutting it. And like, that's just genuinely how you feel in yourself. Right? 
Whereas sometimes when I even see a lot of people who will walk and, and like they'll walk, but then they'll also be looking out for whether other people are watching them. Mm. Like I would love sometimes. to like in this actually bring in yeah. an experience that I um recognized because I used to do like regular heels classes. Yeah. And when I like something that I noticed from like, and I feel like I'm just one of those people. I'm just like a very deep person. I always just like notice random shit that's going on in the room that yeah. probably other people don't observe. But I remember noticing and like the I noticed it the first class. And then every time I went back, I kept on noticing it. And I would notice when I did it myself as well. But a lot of the time in those classes, because obviously it's like an edge for, for people and like it can be an edge even if you've been doing it for like such a long time. But mm-hmm. a lot of women in those classes, they – go to fuck up or like they think they're fucking up. So they look instantly at someone else. So, and what I found was it was a lot of the time, the girls in those classes that would come in like the, the lingerie and be all dressed up and like, you know, be really in that sensual energy, but then they're the first ones to like look across the room and make sure they're not making a mistake. And I always used to think that was so interesting because it's like that external validation thing again, where it's like, you can act as confident as you want and you can think you're as confident you know, you're so confident because maybe you're getting told by people all the time that you're confident, but then when it actually comes to it internally, you're battling with yourself because it's like, oh, is this the right thing? Is this the right thing? And like, I am so guilty of doing it myself, but it's really interesting as well, just seeing it in other people and being like, whoa, these people do it like every fucking class or every single time we do like a run. It's really interesting. Yeah, a thousand percent. And even when you think about like, um, if I'm, I walk quite regularly between my work, my dance, like a 20 minute walk. And sometimes it's a busy road. Sometimes it's not. And I will watch people from the other side of the road and it might be just us two. And we're like really far apart. So you, you, they wouldn't even know that I was walking and I can see how they walk when no one's watching. Mm. Right. And that will tell you a lot. It's like, who are you when no one's watching you? Yes. That's a thing um, that people normally say when it comes to, I think, discipline and like congruency and just really like following through with things. But equally, how do you walk down your hallway? Mm. How do you hold yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror? Like you, I, I, same thing with the heels dance thing. And that's some, it's amazing to be able to bring so many tangible examples from it. But I have so many people who are able to have no problem dancing in front of a crowd, but they would never feel comfortable enough to dance on their own to themselves in a mirror, like at home naked you know what I mean like those you need to be able to have both because confidence is so holistic and embodying that it means that you embody it in all areas of your life that is like such a powerful message what would you like usually say like someone's like coming to you and like Mm -hmm. they're wanting to build that confidence like what would be some like nuggets of advice that you would give them if they're wanting to start that you know confidence do do you think it starts with self-connection because I kind of feel like what you're speaking to, I'm kind of like, it's so interesting that we do very separate things, but like the way you're speaking is very, very like similar to how I would say, like speak to my clients and be like, okay, so like, let's get some mirror work in. And they're like, Mm -hmm. I can't do that. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) like now I've like, now I understand, of course, it's it's a huge trigger for some people, but like at the start, I was like, you can't look at yourself in the mirror. And like, I am, I definitely have work to do around confidence. I'm not saying that I'm like fucking up there or anything, but it's crazy that like some things that, you know, for example, we can normalize other people. It's like a huge fucking thing to them, which is totally okay. Um, But yeah, what would be like some things that you would recommend? Yeah. So I'm going to contradict myself and say that sometimes for some people in certain scenarios, faking it till you make it is a good way to get started because it will help you kind of build confidence on the exterior. But equally, we need to acknowledge the interior. And for myself, like, a big reason of why I say, you know, like, let's not fully focus on the fake it till you make it is because it builds up again, that performative confidence. And it ignores the fact that like confidence is also built through the internal work. So for myself, I would say that, yes, you can practice faking till you make it till a certain point, but when you're ready and when you are actually willing to build true fucking confidence, like true internal confidence, you need to get honest right need to get honest if you are uncomfortable with the idea of looking at yourself in the mirror naked or even not naked okay you need to get honest as to why Mm. get honest as to bang 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 why if you feel like oh like i'm I'm," a lot of people won't feel confident they're they're the same people that will say like oh i'm so lazy or i'm really bad um you know with following through or like i procrastinate and like how do you get things so done i'm I'm so demotivated i'm like okay cool well 
you're not showing up for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Get honest about what you said you would do and didn't do, right? Yeah, yeah. Get honest about why you feel what you're afraid of people seeing you know when people are like oh i'm afraid of being seen i'm afraid of taking up space i'm afraid of being the center of attention i'm like what are you afraid of them paying attention to right Um, what are you so afraid of people seeing like oh like what what are you so afraid of and you need to actually be able to be honest about that okay i'm afraid that people are going to see the way i look when i hunch over in a crop top at the gym i'm afraid of the way that people are going to see that i'm not actually like quote unquote nice 24 7 i can sometimes be sassy i'm afraid of people seeing that hey i am actually unproductive there are things that we are so so controlling over which is really ironic because we want the things you want to control are the things that we can't and that's what how other people perceive us that's whether other people like us and the truth is not everyone's going to like you and you need to get used to the idea of being hated like that's just it's a brutal truth but it is and know that the thing you can control is you right it's your relationship with yourself it's your honesty it's how you show up and the more that you focus on that the the less you're actually going to focus on what other people are going to think about you and all these externals yeah um have you had like on your own journey like your like story of like fear of Mm -hmm. being seen fear of being heard has that been like a big part for you or not really yeah yeah, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. I, you know, going back to the socially anxious kind of thing, um, a reason I didn't get social media until later and until I was essentially forced to was because I was afraid of texting people. I actually, it would take, and it's why nowadays it, that habit is so ingrained in me in terms of replying to people so late. But when I got a text, I would be petrified with the idea of what to say because I was afraid that, okay, if I say something, that's not interesting enough they're not going to reply that's going to be the end of the conversation i'm going to be seen as someone that's boring right and then i didn't want the the read receipts in case that i couldn't come up with a reply like soon enough and yes i understand that my actual genuine anxiety was a factor to play into that but there was a whole thing in terms of like i'm going to be boring i'm not going to be you know the fun one i'm not going to be the person that um can hold a conversation and then the things of you know being a high achiever and i know a lot of people especially you know people who are into self-development, I can guarantee that they have a lot of goals to pursue and they're very goal-driven, like they are very um, good at what they do. And when it comes to having the goals is it's like, oh, but I also want to be the social one. I also want to be the pretty one. I want to be attractive as well. Like I'm afraid of other people seeing me as, I guess, almost separated, right? Like separate from them. I'm afraid of people seeing me as someone that um, is too weird or is only, is is too nerdy. Like I want to be all of these things. So that for me was a big part of what I had to focus on growing up, like especially as a child. And then as I started to share my journey on um, like online and everything, it was like, fuck, like no one around me, again, they're doing the occasional posts. Like they would never even post weekly, even if it's just a photo of themselves. They would never write all of this DNM shit on, on Instagram stories. They would never talk on their stories. And for me, it was also a lot of like people thinking, oh, you're trying to be an influencer. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not because I actually have a business to run. But that being said, it was like, okay, I need to prioritize what I'm trying to do. I need to prioritize the impact that I'm creating and letting go of that control because people will still think now that I'm trying to be an influencer, especially people that I meet straight off the bat. Maybe I meet them through work or all of that. And it's like, they see that I'm, you know, this, I'm doing all of this on Instagram. Like, yeah, that's still terrifying to me. It is. But equally, I need to like, remember where my priorities lie. And I need to remember that like, people are going to have their own interpretation. I can't, I actually can't like control that. And that's not actually none of my fucking business. If they think I'm trying to be an influencer, sure. But equally, like it's a completely different business model and whatever. So there's, there's like little bits and your what you're afraid of being seen as may stay consistent with you or like myself, it may change over time. Yeah. Um, and you, would you say that like that story that's like mm. kind of started all of that conversation around like the, I don't want to be the boring girl. I don't want to mm. be this, I don't want to be that. Do you feel like that's like related to like some inner child stuff that you had to work through to kind of leave layers of that story behind? Did you have to like look into more of the core of that or did you kind of just 
move and like like um acknowledge that it was there and then just continue to move like how did you kind of move through that on more of like a tangible level yeah well I think it always for me it was like really recognizing that okay the conversations and even the amount of conversations I had like I grew up in a very quiet house household the amount of conversations I'd have and the type are very different to all these people that I would go to school with and they talk 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 all day and then I was like I also even thought about, okay, do I even want to be a part of these conversations? Do these conversations even interest me? So nowadays I don't even try and involve myself in these like certain conversations because I'm like, I actually, I feel like I want to be interested, but I'm not right. I want to be a part of it, but it's like why I'm just doing it for the sake of it. Right. I'm doing it for the sake of engagement. I remember you posted like a couple of months ago and you posted something around like, you know, a lot of people your age are still like going out and partying all the time and they're gossiping and they're doing all these things. Whereas you're like, I can still go to those events, but as soon as someone speaks to me, it's something that like, I don't want to entertain. I literally just don't entertain it. Like, it's not that you completely cut those people off, but you're kind of just like, cool next. And I just remember seeing, like seeing you post something about that. And I was like, that is so fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people miss that because what we like I'll use like an example in my life. Like I just don't watch the news. I just don't have yeah. the TV like plugged in or anything and just haven't in like five or something years. And it's like people come to me and like the first thing that they want to like communicate on or like talk about is like, did you see the news? Did you see what's been going on? Did you see this? Did you see that? And I'm always like, no. And I mean, people have learned now not to come to me and just be like, have you seen the news? Because they just fucking know. Like if you're going to say it, you're going to just get like. Yeah. Look the other way, but I loved how like you know you're at such a young age like you've learned these things you've integrated these things and you're teaching people like your standards and I think that is just like so powerful because a lot of people like I said don't understand it. Um, how would you like you know if someone was kind of like listening to this and they're like, I wouldn't even know how to do that because yeah. potentially they're a people pleaser because like if you're you know, a lot of the stuff that you've been speaking into around like the incongruency with confidence, it actually just sounds like you're also just explaining like people places because it's like yeah. staying stuck in identities to please other people rather than actually coming into your truth of like, I actually don't feel fucking good. Um, how would you like say that you would start that journey of just like actually setting some standards in relationships to only entertain what actually feels good for your next evolution? Yeah, that's huge. And that just reminded me of like another thing of I, the big part of me of what I've been working on is actually just showing my sass and showing my brutal, you know, thing and actually being seen as a bitch. (laughs) Because I am a little bit I am, you know, I'm actually, I've got like really dark humor, really dry humor, I will say like something that isn't necessarily not that I wouldn't say like not the nicest thing, but it is something like it's more of a sassy thing. And it's pretty like pretty brutal, right. Um, But equally, like I'm for me, I will take directness like very easily, I take bad feedback very easily, because I'm like, if you're telling me I'm doing my job wrong, that's fine. Because my job is to do it right right you know what I mean like so yeah, yeah. I, I actually have no issue with that and so really like the honesty kind of piece so when it comes to the people pleasing and really trying to set like standards in that will align for you because I'm telling you now eventually people will catch up and eventually people will pick up on it like I've been with my partner for going into our sixth year we're like around five and a half years now so since very young and we're very different to who we were when we met and even him like we had very different interests very different like values and all of that and he's only now starting to you know pick up certain things and starting to actually un- gain you know a bit more self-awareness and even he's like you know what like two years ago I would have said oh like how dare she do that but now I'm like fine so um first of all trusting that like people are going to eventually pick up on it like it's at their own pace and it's actually you can't do anything about it um the second thing is if you are aren't like me and you have a you're a bit scared of saying this conversation fucking sucks then I (laughs) because I do sometimes say that and so or sometimes I just say to my partner I don't like this conversation (laughs) I'll be like okay (laughs) um but what you can often do is often do it in like a bit of a constructive criticism way in the sense of being like let's talk about our own lives instead right because uh, you know same thing with the gossip is and this isn't just specific and unique to people of young ages if anything i see it even more in people who are older and in middle-aged people whacking with them yeah right bro like when i worked in like retail there's like the 50 year old women who have been like in retail their whole life and i'm like you can call in sick and you're like the talk of the entire fucking store for like a week it's like 
oh my god <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely and it's like even observing conversations around uh with parents con observing conversations with people of all age groups and it doesn't necessarily even have to be negative gossip but a lot of people are just very fixated on other people's lives like oh what are they doing like what's that person from year two like her parents what are they doing blah 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 and it's like or oh, did you see what this person is doing and i'm like let's actually focus on our own lives right let's focus on our goals maybe even start to think about for yourself okay are your conversations mainly f fixated on the past mm. right are they fixated on the past have you like something I noticed that I actually was like I'm actually not okay with this is a lot of conversations with some people would just be like repeating anecdotes like oh remember that time we did that and it's all good to be nostalgic it's all good to do that but there was never actually anything conversations about what they were doing now or what they were working towards so for are your conversations more centered on the past versus the present and the future do you know what i mean like yeah. that, that kind of thing like that's something really interesting to start thinking about i think as well like just to add to that like yeah you know a lot of the time and i'm even just reflecting on like people in my life who who i like you know, have known for a long time. And it's like really interesting or even just like thinking about people I went to school with is probably a better way to put that. But it's like, it's interesting to see how like different people have like panned out in life. Like some people who I know, like are just in their own lane, like they're just doing the thing. They're just like fucking going for it, like traveling all the things. And then like other people who are like still wanting to know every like intricate detail of everyone else's life, yet they're so stuck in themselves and they're yeah. still the same person as school. And it's really interesting, like, because kind of when you were saying that I'm like of course if you're only paying attention to other people's lives one it's an easy way out of looking at how you actually feel in yourself but two you will never know who you are because yeah. you're constantly taking on like this open channel of like other people's like beliefs other people's they're doing this I should be doing this other people's fucking everything that is not a way to fill up your cup like it's going to be like fucking overflowing with like rotten coffee instead of like a nice fucking oat latte I don't know yeah exactly exactly and the thing of I even mean, like so off track but like filling up your own cup everyone's coffee or order is different you could be a basic like flat white that's fine whatever most Aussies are you could be for me in an ice long black two shots kind of gal it could be a different size and however you want to fill that cup it actually requires different things it requires different amounts and it requires a different mix of things so like whatever you actually want in your life you need to understand that your standards will be different your standards and your desires will be different okay people again might project onto you like they'll always view things through their own lens and most of the time it is also in your best interest when they express their concern about like either how much you're doing or why you're putting yourself out there online or why you're starting a business or um, why, you know, even if they're like, oh my God, you're doing a heels dance class, like that, that's a pretty out there. That's pretty weird, you know, like they will always put their own perspectives on it. And I think it's really interesting that you, when you are a confident person, you actually are able to filter that through, right? Mm -hmm. It's not to say that you're ignoring these things because I think that that's also a sign of lack of confidence is sometimes when you actually just refuse to listen to anyone and it's like blah, 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 blah. Like for me, confidence is actually being able to have a conversation and have be speak with someone who disagrees with you, right? One of my mentors like speaks a lot about, you know, opinions and neutrality. And it's something so interesting because for me, it's like, I, you know, I will disagree with things that you say and you will disagree with some things that I say. And I have zero issue with that. Like I have zero issue with hearing that and actually having conversation with it. So even thinking about that in the sense of like, well, this is the only right way to do it. And this is this. It's like, how can you actually just live your own life, listen to what other people have to say, but also let that filter through your bubble rather than actually just, you know, everything infiltrating through or everything bouncing off and you actually refuse to listen to anyone else yeah oh my god like you speaking into this I'm like just seeing myself like my past self like I feel like say a year and a half ago two years ago I was someone who was just always so easily influenced mm -hmm. but I would not notice it in the moment like it would be very much like I would look back and go I've lost myself like I've completely like just shaped my business as how like this mentor said I should and I haven't even checked in with how it actually feels for me and I was always just like just so naive and like you know, taking on everyone's things. And then like literally yesterday I was talking to my best friend and I was like, I am so proud of myself for being able to hold that. Some people view what I do differently to what it actually is. And instead of 
completely taking that on and like changing my fucking whole office suite and doing all the thing that I would have yeah. done. I've kind of gone, okay, how can I actually like listen to how they've perceived what I do, take that on for feedback and then like land more in actually what it is I do because like I work energetically with the menstrual cycle more than I do anything but mm. I've noticed that I've had like a few people just like perceiving that I do it more from like the hormonal lens or more from this or that, that and like that's totally fine because like I've communicated that somewhere for that to be how they believe but like past me would be like taking that as like if I'm not doing it how they're saying then like you know I'm a, I'm a fuckwit like blah 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 and it's like really yeah. interesting saying that because it's like wow it's so true like the lack the more lack of confidence that you have in yourself the more you're just going to take on what everyone else is telling you because that's so much easier than actually well you don't even know what it is that's true for you you're just trying to blend and morph and like turn into like the most ideal person but in reality at the end of the day you're going to be left there like I was like a year and a half ago it's going why am I not where I want to be but I I've like listened to everyone around me which like right now I'm like well, that's why. But like back then it was like, actually, like I've done everything and I'm still like, you know, quote unquote left behind or whatever it is. It's, it's really interesting. You bring that in. Exactly. Exactly. And the thing with that is like, um, that's what I, I've been speaking a lot recently about confidence when it comes to busy and like goal driven people, because again, you might seem like really confident, but the, the thing is, people will shit all over your goals people will give you resistance when it comes to your goals whether it be either disrespecting your goals and judging you or they provide their advice whether it's solicited or not right and i think that remember that this is why confidence is the only thing that's going to get you over the line because you actually need to have a solid relationship with yourself you need to know what is for you you need to know what's aligned with you and you need to be able to I, I sound like a teacher, but you need to be able to critically think. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's just the thing. It's like, wake the fuck up and actually ask yourself, is this for me? And if you don't understand who you are, if you don't understand your values, if you don't understand and are not willing to get honest about whether or not it feels good for you versus, oh, that's just what everyone expects me to do you're going to be doing a lot of like, um, what do you call it? Spirals. You're going to be doing a lot of loops back and forth with one step forward, two steps back, because you're going to be like this tug of war mentally in terms of trying to listen to what everyone's saying. And it's like, Oh, should I do this? Or maybe I shouldn't go for that thing. Or maybe, maybe it isn't the right time. Like, or maybe this person did it that way. So I need to do it that way. There is comes a point where you need to actually like shut the fuck up and actually look at yourself and ask, does this make sense for me? Do yeah. I actually love this? Do Does this feel aligned for me? And sometimes it's going to feel scary because it's different to what everyone else is doing. But equally, again, that's also how confidence gets you over the line because it gets you out of your comfort zone and to have a strong enough relationship with failure to do the fucking thing. Yeah. And I like totally like agree with that as well. Like for as long as you're taking on other people's limitations, well, that's as long as you're going to stay stuck because like, it's so easy to see other people and fall into the whole like fucking like gossip and like, oh, like they're only, they've only done this much with their life, blah, blah, blah. But then at the same time, listen to like, take on their limitations and keep yourself stuck. Whereas when you're actually confident in who you are, it's like, cool like that's where they've chosen to like take themselves in this lifetime or like whatever it is but like I know that there's more for me and I can actually continue and something that Tay like told me a couple of months ago was like watch who you share your like goals with so it's not about like not sharing where you want to go but it's like watch who, who who it is that you share it with and when I took that on I literally just messaged her the other day I was like bro like literally as soon as I stopped sharing like some of like the goals that I have with just like certain people in my life who you think it's not that they're like consciously not supporting you as well. Sometimes it's actually an unconscious thing. Sometimes you're taking on these limitations unconsciously from people just by like a sudden fucking facial change or whatever it is. And your unconscious mind literally knows that like this person isn't supporting this and you're going to keep yourself stuck. And like, I stopped doing that. And I literally messaged Tay and I was like, bro, like what the fuck's going on? Like, I feel like I've just been like slung, like slingshotted into like, like through 20 million glass ceilings. (laughs) like you know reach like this whole new level and I I realize it's come back to not sharing that with with people because yeah other people's projections they can actually like hold you back I guess and like I guess that would actually be a cool question to ask you of like do you believe that philosophy or do you believe like you should be able to tell people your goals no matter what when it comes to confidence Mm. 
Hmm, that's a really good fucking question because I I would say yes to both. I would say that, again, I, I wouldn't have necessarily a problem with sharing my goals with everyone around me or everyone and anyone but equally I am so a big part like I think the dictionary definition to confidence is like the trust in your own ability and your appreciation of your qualities your talents your resources all of that I value my fucking time and I know that I'm not actually going to waste my time having conversations that I know I don't need to have. So a really good example for this, and I've never really spoken about this, but I always try and keep like my work separate to my social media, if that makes sense. So I don't, I purposely try not to connect with my colleagues as much as they are my actual family. Like I actually spend so much time with them. We are so, so close, but I try and keep that separate to my Instagram for a reason, right? And the reason is, is because I know that the people that I surround myself with at work are amazing in that context, but equally, they're not doing what I want to do. Equally, if in times, like I remember like around a year ago, I was just going through so much sickness. I was just off sick for a while. And I remember my manager called me and she is, she's a mom, like she's amazing. And she was absolutely looking out for me. She's like, I'm just so worried about you. And I think that you're doing too much right? I think you're doing too much with your dance, with your running, with your gym, with um, this, this, this. She didn't even know I had my business at the time. And I remember at that time, it was a moment of doubt where I was like spiraling almost. I was like, am I doing too much? Do I need to drop back in uni? Do I need to do this? And I was like, hang on a sec. Her too much is to the people of who I want to roll and body and want to model is there not enough, right? Too much is so different to other people. And so the limit is so, so different. So for me, I'm very particular about that because I know that I have so many other things to talk about with, for example, in just this, in this scenario, my work colleagues, but I'm not going to talk about my business, yeah. right? Oh my God. As soon as you said that, I was like, I fucking love that. And yeah. second to that is I have also been with my partner for like going on 10 years at the end of this year. Wow. So same as you of being together from like a really young age, you know, yep. through the whole, like a lot of people do the whole, like, oh, but you need to have time apart. Like in your like early twenties, like whatever it fucking is that they say. And I remember like when I was younger and I was, I used to have chronic anxiety. Like I was like such a different fucking bitch. Like <laughs> couldn't even like go like to the point where like, I would like stay at my partner's house and like not even leave his room the entire day till he got home from work. Cause I couldn't even like fathom going to the toilet in one of his housemates. Yep. Like it was just like so cooked. And it's so funny because like in like that period of my life and we would fight all the time and it was such a toxic relationship back when we were a bit younger and it hasn't been that way for like six years now. But like in that fragment of our relationship, when we would argue all the time, it was when I was going to my mum who has never really had like an incredible relationship. I would be going to friends in school who one had probably never had a relationship or were just like had friends with benefits. I was going to all these people who, if they were in a marriage, they were fucking unhappy. Yeah. And taking on their fucking advice and like the, you know, taking that on of like, oh, he shouldn't treat you that way, but like whatever it could have been. And like, I'm not saying I was not fucking perfect either. Like we're both not great, but it's like, and I haven't even spoken about that in the podcast. Like, okay, get But like, (laughs) but it's like when you take on other people's like limitations, even when you like put that into any area of your life, like I know as soon as I stopped doing that in my relationship, we have the healthiest fucking relationship that like I honestly have ever seen. And people are like, literally my friend said to me last week, she's like, you guys are still in the honeymoon stage. Like how? And I'm like, we're not still in the honeymoon stage. Mm -hmm. We fucking communicate and we know like we have standards for each other and we just, it's just, we've normalized that. And as soon as you normalize like that lower frequency of listening to other people in like that area, then of course that's going to be your normal. You're going to be like feeling insecure because all your friends are feeling insecure. You're going to be feeling like your boyfriend's a fucking asshole because their boyfriend's an asshole and you believe, you know what I mean? Like it's so interesting. And I feel like I'm even giving myself wisdom right now of like, yeah, oh, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The transformation is huge. It's huge. And like, I even got asked this the other day by one of the girls from my dance studio after we went running together and they were like, 
how did you, you know, like, how did you actually go, like, how have you been together for so long, right? And they're older than me, but they've, they've not been in really a long-term relationship in a while. And I said, I truly believe with every connection, every relationship, whether it's romantic, platonic, whatever, you either choose to grow together or grow apart right? Mm -hmm. It's actually, there is going to be resistance in growing together because you are going through so many different evolutions, but it takes that communication. Um, and you need to be confident enough to say that. Like you need to be, again, this is why you need to have confidence. You need to know yourself. You need to actually be able to communicate it. You need to be able to set your standards and you need to be able to look at yourself because once you can actually like I guess, foster that relationship with yourself, which I would assume that you've done in order to also achieve that kind of growth with your partner. It's like your relationship with other people will embody that kind of standard because you have yeah. that standard for yourself. Definitely, definitely. And like, I think, you know, you you mentioned before, like your partner, he um only recently, like in the past couple yeah. of years, has started becoming more open to it and exactly the same as dry. Like it hasn't been like this. And I think a lot of people see things almost like they're not that it's the end result because our relationship's just going to continue getting better, but like using it as the end result, as an example, mm -hmm. people see that and they think like, like they think it's just like either always been that way and it's so easy. Like you've just found the one and it's like, it actually takes so much fucking dedication and work just like it does working on yourself. And I did a lot of work on myself and like learned how to connect into myself way before like I had to role model that to dry for like quite a long time and there was a lot of resistance there of like fuck like this just is I don't know if, is this working and then it would be like yeah it's actually fucking fine he's just catching up and and I feel like that's like grown that like um allowed like I had to be more of that masculine in the relationship is what I'm trying to say yeah. for that little bit of time for him to catch up. And then now I can like fall back into my feminine and there's always going to be the dance in a relationship, even connecting to yourself, right? Like, like you said, like you are like a fucking, like in your hustle era all the time, but yet you still like do your heels and you come into your sensuality and you come into like that feminine energies. Like there's always going to be that balance, but I feel like a lot of people just don't want to accept that you actually have to put in some effort yeah yeah oh my god literally and i honestly oh my god guys i i don't think you're entitled to confidence <laughs> i don't i actually think if you have not done the work you don't deserve to feel confident and the reason is like confidence is not it's not your birthright does that make sense like it's actually not your birthright confidence is a commitment and it is a skill um i'm sure everyone's heard like someone say that whether it's mel robbins or I don't know, Tony Robbins, like one of the Robbins, like one of the really popular <laughs> self-development people. Like, But confidence is a skill and you actually need to earn it. You actually need to work on it and you need to be able to be willing to master it, right? And so for a lot of people, what I see is they're either not even willing to start the journey or they get to a certain point of confidence. They say, oh, I'm done now. But equally, like I'm, I teach confidence and I am still so excited and, and constantly looking and, and working on new levels of confidence, even deeper levels of confidence, because it is that journey. And the moment that you say that, like, I, or, you know, I, I like, I, I'm not confident anymore. Like I, I actually don't need to learn anymore. Like, okay, well, what are you doing? Because that's just the end of your evolution. Why are you saying yeah. that that's the end of your evolution and you're literally, you know, only halfway through your life, if if that? Yeah. And that's where, like, people put that, like, cap on the bottle and they just think, like, oh, like, this is, um, like, like a good example would be, like, oh, but I used to be, like, for you, right? You could be, mm -hmm. like, but I used to be really anxious and now I feel really good. So, like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, cool. But after, like, maybe eight months, you'll start to fucking lose it. And mm -hmm. then it will be, it's just going to be a long-term cycle that you yeah. have broken. Whereas when you actually choose to dedicate time, it's like the fucking gym. Like that's what's actually coming to my mind. Like people get the body that they love and they like, I feel fucking good, but they haven't done the mindset side to it. So then they stop going to the gym and then they get fat again. And then, it, I mean, that's probably not the right word to use, but like, you know, they get like into a state of their body yeah. where they're just like, don't feel fucking good. Don't 100%. look fucking good. Don't get the validation. And then all the confidence wears off. And it's like, poor me. Well, no, you actually just stopped like, fucking caring and you didn't withhold like uphold the standard for yourself you held it until you got to a space like you didn't yeah. allow yourself to continue evolving 
Yeah, absolutely. It, you didn't actually, and that's the thing is people didn't actually make it a part of their identity. They didn't choose to become someone who's confident. And I think that when, until you realize that, hey, confidence actually is strongly linked to your ability to show up to yourself, to your consistency, um, to how you speak, like it's, it's linked to everything until you realize that you're going to lose it and you're going to just keep going, whether it's a steady fall or like, again, hitting your rock bottom, you're going to lose that. And so it's just really important to remember that confidence work, again, is done on the internal, it's done on the external, but it's it's seriously like a progressive thing and you need to constantly be committed to it because I think that especially if you are someone that has been working on it for a while and then you find something and you're like, oh, but now I'm feeling really insecure. Why am I feeling insecure? I was so confident, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, no. That's just your new level. You know, like every level has a new level. That's just your next initiation. Like for me, I am always like, people are like, oh my God, you're so confident. Yeah. But I was in situations, I put myself in situations almost every week where it's like, I'm so nervous. I'm shaking. Right. Yeah. Because I'm just committed to that. I I, lit- I always make a joke like I've permanently moved outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> like I just I just moved. I didn't just move across the, the country. I moved literally outside of my comfort zone, and I'm just permanently set up there. Yeah, I that like really ties in so beautifully to what you said at the start around like mm-hmm. you've been through, you know, how, like um the opportunity thing. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a fucking opportunity. Like, cool, you're shaking right now. You're wobbling. You're not sure if you can hold it. Like lean in it's an opportunity like you can fucking do it and I think that's so cool what would you feel like is like a really big stretch for you like if right now you had absolutely no limitations what would be like a massive stretch that would be like even outside of your uncomfortable zone Ooh, okay here's a question so kind of just like <laughs> the biggest edge like in in what kind of scenario just like confidence wise or like yeah, just like something that you think like if you thought of doing it, it would be like, fuck, I feel sick. But like on the other side of that, you'd be like, I have just skyrocketed through like 20 levels that I didn't even realize I could smash through in like this short amount of time. Yeah, that is so interesting. Okay. For me, ooh, I would say it's so funny because I'm trying to think about like what are the most recent situations I've done that made me feel like that. And then for me, it's probably going to be like the next part of that like I remember when I did my first um confidence workshop like in person um that was in collaboration with my heels dance studio I was like shaking beforehand like shaking and then yet when I came on there and I was actually speaking like no one had any idea I was nervous like I was like I'm a really good public speaker so I was just like very into it so for me I think it would be doing and re- really creating like an in-person event like that but like um on my own um logistics wise it is something I know people have been requesting but I'm also just like sorting it out logistics wise and that will come like after my um online program finishes but yeah I think that that for me is just like I I'm like I don't even know how I would make that happen but I would I like also part of me is just like I know I would make it happen. <laughs> Don't know how, but I'll make it happen. And even then I'm just like, oh, you know? So um, yeah, something like that. And even like the last thing that I did was like attending like another, um, these three like LA dances, like heels workshops and everything. And I was again, shaking. I actually nearly walked out of the classes each time. So I think for me, it would be attending something else like that. Like another really, I guess, like advanced when I'm not actually advanced kind of workshop. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking sick. And like, it's just so cool because it's so easy for people to be like, oh, it's so easy for her, but like, listen to this episode and you'll see like, yeah. you are literally only human. Yeah. Like it actually happens, but you choose to move past that. And that's like the most powerful part. And oh, something came to me that I was going to like say that when you were like speaking, oh, like a lot of people will think that like even just the, oh, you have a podcast, you're so confident, like, whoa, like, and that's where it stops for them. And I just love, because I've like received that, like from people like, oh my God, like you're just like doing all the things, like you must be so fucking confident, blah, blah. But it's like, that's where it stops for them. That's like their like upper limit. It's like- yeah that whereas I think it's really cool it's like okay what makes me feel really uncomfortable like you said running an in-person workshop makes you literally need to do like a nervous poo for like the whole day before but like send it let's just do it yeah exactly (laughs) exactly and it's just like 
I, I don't want like my comfort bubble to be the same, if that makes sense. Like it's constantly expanding. And I always describe like your comfort zone is kind of like a rubber band. So when you stretch it, there's going to be resistance and you, you it will snap back sometimes and it'll fucking hurt. But equally, as you look over time, that rubber band, which is your comfort zone and your comfort bubble has stretched. Like it does, you don't, might not see it in the moment, but it has stretched and you just need to keep on like, working on that and knowing that like okay these massive goals you, it takes even a level of confidence to declare that it takes even a level of confidence to let that come into ideation mm. right but it really comes down to the kind of person you want to become and if you are going to set like that limitation on yourself remember that that's a choice mm. and so think about why you're holding yourself back in that and why that's like a safe goal right like a safe goal yeah I feel like that's such a cool place to like wrap this episode up like it is actually a fucking choice like you're choosing to be insecure and like I know that sounds so fucked like I even created some content the other day and I like um created a reel and it was just like you're choosing to have a painful period and when I said yeah. it, I was like oh and I was like actually no that is actually a part of me that's like yeah <laughs> like I can really relate when you were just like I'm like how you said like you're direct and like all the things and I am like that too. Like all of my friends are like, you're a fucking cunt. And I'm like, yep, so well, I am. But I don't bring it through enough in my business and I'm working on that. That's like a whole confidence thing. We love it. But like, it's fucking true. You're choosing it. Like I, I can see that through my lens. I can see that through your lens. It's like every problem in your life, like even anyone listening, like fucking write them down. Is it your relationship? Is it your way you're eating? Is it the way you're moving? Is it like whatever? Like fucking write it all down and then just actually look at like, take some responsibility that like you're choosing every single thing. And it's like, it can it can be a, a tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, it's actually true. Because yeah, you can choose differently. <laughs> yeah, truth is the tough pill to swallow, but it's the magic pill. It's what I always say. It's the one that only makes like shit happen. And when you choose things, like remember that you know whatever you're complaining about, it's like okay, cool, this is shit. Maybe it's not your fault, but equally take responsibility about it, okay? Take responsibility for it. Okay, this is shit. This has happened to you. I'm sorry. What the fuck are you going to do about it? Like, actually, what the fuck are you going to do about it? You're feeling insecure? Cool. What the fuck are you going to do about it? What are you doing about it now? Nothing? Okay, that's fine, right? Again, <laughs> you haven't earned it. So just, like, <laughs> get honest. Again, that's the first thing is just to start off is actually just get honest. And I think that, again, people who lack confidence or aren't feeling confident, they're scared of seeing their own shit. But that is your first step. It's a scary step. But I'm just telling you now, that's where you need to start because you can't, once you know better, you have to do better. Yeah. Oh, cool. Love, love, love. <laughs> um, can you let everyone know where they can find you and plug your course that's coming because it looks really good? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Amazing. So you can find me on Instagram at Sophia Juria. It is Sophia with an F, not a PH. And I've recently worked on my confidence in terms of telling the barista that when they spell my name, um, because I just, I think the S-O-P-H-I-A spelling is just so fugly in my opinion. And I just want to have my name spelled right. So um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> it's at S-O-F-I-A. J-U-R-I-A. You can find everything there. You can find my podcast there as well. Um, that one is primarily like more so about normalizing self-development for young adults. Um, and then also we, I am having, yeah, my intensive confidence program called Unveiled and that starts early May. So I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but equally, I think I'm going to keep the doors open shortly after we start live. So that is so, so exciting. It's definitely something I've been working on since last year. So yeah, I'm just so excited to be teaching this body of work. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the potty. It's been such a nice, like a DNM vibe. I feel like it's just been so good. I'm like, love, love, love. Um, and thank you everyone for listening and I'll be back next week. Thank you so much for being a listener of the podcast. I love and appreciate you so, so much. And to show my appreciation and love for you, head on over to my Instagram at sacred space, W to Nicolase, jump in my DMs, let me know why you love the podcast and I'll send you a little something special. See you next week.